So, so cool to be in the house of God this morning. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're all good. All good. Awesome. Um, we're going to uh, open our Bibles this morning to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse um, 9 to 15. Um, the text is there on the, on the screens. For we are co-workers. Everyone say co-workers. Co-workers in God's service. You are God's field. God's building. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through flames. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. God, we thank you for your presence in this place. And Holy Spirit, we just welcome and invite you to speak into our hearts once again. Lord, the word that you want to um, um, say, Lord, I pray that you will help me to preach your word this morning and let us receive it and apply it to our lives. Father God, we pray in your awesome name. Everyone said, amen. amen, amen. Cool. Well, like Stuart said, um, Pastor Stephen's been talking about the unshakable kingdom, right? A kingdom which um, will be shaken, but after it's shaken will remain, right? Um, which, is, which is unshakable. And so this morning, the... The topic of um, the, the title of my message is building on the unshakable foundation. All right, and so in this text here, um, the apostle Paul is encouraging the church. He's encouraging each one of us to build um, our lives in such a way that will remain standing. Right on on that day when we stand before God, we'll all present ourselves before God, present our lives before God, um, and He will test, you know, He'll put the, our lives through the test to see whether it will remain, whether we've built our lives according to, um, according to Him or not, um, in order that we might receive a reward, right? He's a God who wants to reward those, right? He, he wants to reward His children. He wants to reward us. And I remember back in the days um, in youth, when, when I was in youth, I'm leading the youth now, but back in those days, we... Um, we had a, a, a challenge, um, the egg drop challenge. Anyone remember the egg drop challenge? You know what I'm talking about? Where you get a raw egg, each team is given a raw egg, and um, some material like, um, I think it was just newspaper and tape, or something like that. And you had to um, drop an egg from uh, kind of like the ceiling height down to the ground without it cracking, all right? And so using the material you're, you're, you're given, you had to construct, build something, design something that will cushion the egg's fall so that it doesn't splat on the ground. And so um, some people like took the newspaper and just wrapped the egg up, just wrapped it up with heaps and heaps of newspaper and used tape, taped it all up, hoping that that would absorb the, the impact um, and the egg wouldn't crack. And others, more creative people, um, were making, designing all cuts of um, parachutes, right? They had this, this parachute out of newspaper and with, with sellotape coming down, um, attached to the egg, and they'll put some cushioning around the egg as well, hope for, hoping to, um, you know, slow that descent down to the ground. Um, and and we, at the end of the time, we all had to present Right, our building, our structure, um, to the judge Paul Miller, who got up on a ladder and um, released the egg from the top to see if it would crack or to see if it was still intact. And some received the reward, the points for their team, and others received um, an opportunity to go and make scrambled eggs afterwards. And um, I was looking at the stain on the carpet in the first service. I was wondering, was that from one of the egg splats on the ground? Yeah. Don't know who looks after these youth, but um, but the purpose of, of testing it, the purpose of that that test is to find out whether what we have built um, does the job, right? Does the job it's designed to do, and, and and then you get the reward for it. And so that's what it's like on that day when we present our lives before God. He likens our lives to a building that we're we're building um, throughout our life. We're building something that we will present 
to God, which is, which is, which is so cool, which is awesome. Um, and so Paul points out here that the foundation for this building, right, the foundation for us to build our lives upon has already been laid. It's already there. There's no other foundation that we should build our lives upon other than that which has already been laid, which is Jesus Christ. Right? You can't even present your, your building, you can't present your life to God if it's built on any other foundation. Right? You won't be allowed in to actually present that before, before God. The only way we can present our, our lives, our buildings before God, if it's built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And so in Matthew chapter 16, uh, verse 13 to 18, we see Jesus talking with his disciples, with his followers. They're having this conversation about who everyone in town is saying that Jesus is, right? And, and they have all these different kinds of ideas. Some say John the Baptist. Others say, oh, he's, he's Elijah. Others say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And then Jesus turns to his disciples and says, but what about you, right? What about you? Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answers and says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, right? Peter's name means rock. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. We know that God built, used Peter, right, as, as one of those apostles who founded the, the early church. He built his uh, built the church upon um, the ministry of Peter. But what he's saying here is the revelation, right, that Peter had. The revelation that Jesus is the Son of God, that He is the Messiah, the, the Son of the living God, is that very foundation that God is building His church upon, right? And that He wants us to build our lives upon, that very revelation. And so it's, it's like he said, it's a revelation that didn't come through flesh and blood, but it came from the Father in heaven. And so when we're praying for our, our lost friends, when we're praying for our, our family um, who aren't saved, what we're praying for is a revelation. God, we pray for this revelation from heaven of you that, you, that that Jesus is the Son of God, that they will know that you are the Messiah, not just some great man that lived a, a, a while ago who, who lived a good life and had some wise teachings and, you know, some of his teachings that we should probably listen to, not just one of the prophets that, that just spoke the Word of God, but that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh that came down from heaven, made his home among us, lived a perfect life, died and rose again. That, that revelation, that is what we're praying for. Um, that is the only foundation that we can build our lives upon. Um, and that salvation is through Him alone. Amen? Salvation is through Jesus alone. There's no other way to be saved. No other way to eternal life. There's no other name under heaven given among men which we might be saved. In Acts 4 verse 12, um, there's no other person. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, except through Jesus. There's no other person that can grant salvation. In Ephesians chapter 2, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of your own doing, right? It's not your striving. It's not your works. It's not your righteousness. It's not how many good things we can do here on earth that will get us salvation. It's only through the gift of God, the, the gift of His Son, Jesus. And so that's what we're building upon. That is the, the firm, solid foundation, the unshakable foundation that we build our lives upon because we know that the foundation is pretty important, right? Foundation is, is, is pretty key. When you're building a house, if you get that foundation wrong, then the rest of the house, well, best of luck to that house to see whether it will stand. And um, I actually got a, a picture if we go back um, to the Leaning Tower of Pisa um, right there. Um, like I said, the first service, you can't get your pizza from there. I don't, it's just a place in Italy. The Leaning Tower of Pisa was not designed to lean the way it does, right? It was not um, when, when they created it, everyone thinks oh, it's a massive tourist attraction. Everyone who's visited there takes that same old photo, you know, like putting their hands out, trying to hold up the tower or pushing the tower over or whatever. But it wasn't designed to do that. When they started construction in the year 1173, right, they only built the foundations three meters deep. And right? this was supposed to be a seven, eight story um, tower, a bell tower. Um, and the foundation that they built upon was soft soil, soft sand, some resources say. And so by the time they had completed the second story of this tower, 
it began to move and it began to sink, right? On, on one side, it began to tilt. And, um, and so the, the bad start just continued. It took 199 years um, due, to, due to battles and stuff in the area, but also due to the unstable foundation to actually complete um, this, the, this tower. Um, and so it's standing there um, on its tilt. They've done so much work to try and fix the foundations. They've um, tried to remove soil on, the, on, on one of the sides to kind of um, improve the angle to make it safe enough for people to climb up. But there you have it, the, the Leaning Tower of Pisa built on unstable foundation. But um, God is saying for us to build our lives upon the firm, unshakable foundation, which is Jesus. So how do we do that? Um, Paul says in, in this passage, I laid the foundation as a wise builder, right? As a, as a wise builder. We've got a few builders in this place. Some are wise. <laughs> no, no jokes. <laughs> We've got a lot of wise builders um, in, this, in this place. And he's actually referring to um, the, the story of the wise and foolish builder that Jesus um, mentions in Matthew chapter 7. By the way, we've got our kids here. Uh, so cool to have our kids in the service. And um, I got some coloring at the back of, of the story of the wise and foolish um, builders. And um, you, you might want to grab one of those. I was thinking, Pastor Susie last week got some creative things going. They made like little grasshoppers for Pastor Stephen's word. And I was talking to Heidi like, what can we do? What can, can we get some uh, material for the kids to construct a, a building that has solid foundations? And we'll test it. But was a bit over the top. So but we got coloring. We got amazing coloring for you. Um, you can color that in um, during this word and hopefully learn to be a wise builder. Anyway, um, this is what the passage says. Stick to the word, brother. Um, therefore... Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because, it's, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. I, I think the, the builders of that, that leaning tower, Pisa, could have um, actually taken some instruction from these words and built on the rock rather than the soft sand. It's funny, the place where that tower is built is like, you know, on the grounds of, a, um, I think it's a, a cathedral. Um, and so in the shape of a cross, which is the foundation that we should build our lives upon. But uh, anyway, they chose to build on sand. Um, and that's the result we get. But he's saying here, the, the, the way to build upon the rock is to listen to the instructions and then to build, right? To listen, hear the words of mine, and put them into practice. They are like a wise builder, right? We are to see ourselves as apprentices, right? We are to see ourselves as the apprentice builder taking instructions from the foreman. Yeah, you like that one? <laughs> Thought of that myself. Um, we are to see ourselves as the, the apprentice, not as the experienced builder, but to see ourselves as an apprentice taking instructions from the master builder himself, taking those instructions and then building our lives accordingly, not going off randomly and, and constructing and building at our own, uh, in our own way. You don't get the apprentice to, <laughs> to just have his way on the house. The apprentice comes and learns and he listens to the, to the wiser builder, the older, more experienced builder takes instructions for them and then begins to build in the same way. That's how Jesus is telling us to build, build our lives. And so um, the, he, the, when Jesus tells the story of the wise and foolish builder, it's the end of a sermon. It's the end of a massive sermon that he's just preached, the sermon of his life. Um, it's called the Sermon on the Mount, where he's talking to multitudes of people. Um, and we looked at a bit of this the other Sunday night. I'm not going to try and <laughs> break down the whole Sermon on the Mount for you this morning. Um, but I, God highlighted this part to me that, that we kind of talked about the other night. And it's when Jesus is he's talking to um, his listeners about the law or about the way that they live their lives, the good things, the bad things, um, and, and, the, and the standard to which they, standard to which they live. And it's found in um, Matthew chapter 5 um, from verse 21. And he kind of 
he, he takes the law that people have been technically following, right? Technically, we've been obeying the law. What the law says, all of that stuff, yeah, I'm not doing that stuff. Um, and so technically, they're obeying the law, but God makes it about, yeah, well, what about the, the whole reason behind the law? What about the heart behind the law? And he begins to break it down for them. Um, verse 21, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. A little further down, it says, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. And so he breaks down all these laws and he makes it not just about what you don't do on the outside, but it's, it's about what's actually going on in your heart. It's not about looking good on the outside, but what are you really about? What are you really made of inside? Like a new building can look amazing on the outside um, to people who are looking for a house. And look, at the, the house has got all the stuff, all the, all the, the, the nice paint job, the, the fancy trimmings and fittings and all of that kind of stuff. But real builders will know, yeah, yeah, but what's, what's that made of? Like, what's the framework like? Is that solid? Is that thing going to come down during the school holidays when all the kids are home? Or will it remain standing? And so he goes on to talk about, you know, the good things that we do in life, like giving to the needy, giving to the poor and prayer and fasting. And he tells them, yeah, that's great, but don't do those righteous deeds in front of people just to be seen by them. Right? Don't do it to draw attention. But when you do these things, do them in secret so that your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. You get a reward from your father in heaven. So it's not about making the outside look good. Um, it's not the outside that necessarily will be tested, but it's the inside. What we're made of that will stand before God and, and, and either come crumbling down or remain standing when, when God tests it. And, and so when we focus so much on the outside, that, that's what religion is, right? right? It, it's how do I look in front of people? How, how am I presenting myself in front of others? Do I look the part? Do I look good? But God is more concerned about who we really are. Is that who you are? On the inside, and he takes the standard of the law, and, and which is already quite hard to achieve, and then he raises the bar even higher. He puts it way up here. That's how you got to live. And so when you're reading this, you're like, man, that is hard. Like to, 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 to build my life that way, that is hard, man. That's, that's impossible. And, and the whole point of it is, yeah, that's right. It is impossible without Jesus. And so he's trying to explain here that... Uh, this is why I've come, right? He, he laid that foundation for us to build our lives upon so that we may receive salvation, be cleansed, forgiven for our sins, but also so that we can start living according to his word, so that we can start living in partnership, in relationship with Jesus. See, we are co-workers in this, right? It's not building on our own, but it's being a, a, a co-worker, co-laborers with God, the King James Version says. And so we are listening to the instruction and we are building. We're not going off in building. When we build on our own, we just focus on all of the outside. How does the outside look? Like, is it good enough to present myself in front of people? But when we build with God, He's concerned about who we really are, the framework, the things that will hold us up inside, who we're really, what we really are, what we're really made of. When the, when the time of testing comes, will it hold up? And, and so the, the awesome thing about God is He gave Jesus. And when He gave us Jesus, when we received Jesus into our lives as our Savior and as our Lord, we received the Spirit of the living God. And then we received His Spirit, His, His life um, in, into, into us. And so why, while we, we are the same in the flesh, the same in, in, in our thinking sometimes, in our mind, but our spirit has been made new. We are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come, right? And so He has given us His Spirit. It's no longer I, it's no longer Tim who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Right? And so I'm not doing things on my own, trying and striving to follow the law or to, to be a good person, but I'm walking in step with the Spirit of the living God that He has given me inside of me. I'm in relationship with that as Pastor Jim uh, 
preached not too long ago, we come into his presence and, and we are clothed in, in his garments. Amen. And so the areas in, in our lives that we struggle with, we come before him, we behold him who is perfect, who is pure, who is holy, who is righteous, and we are clothed in that. We're clothed in his image and his, and his likeness. When we're, we're lacking in compassion and mercy for people, we enter into his presence. We're in relationship with God through his spirit, through the word. We see who he is and we put that on. We clothe ourselves in his compassion and his grace and love and mercy for people and we go out and we be that. Uh, th th that God has called us to be. And so we're not striving on our own. We're doing it in partnership and relationship with the Holy Spirit. And He teaches us how to live. Amen? But even though He's done all that for us, we can choose to build on our own still. You know, sometimes I, I admit that, that that's me sometimes. I've got the Holy Spirit inside of me willing to direct and, and, and lead my life. But sometimes I'm all about like, oh, doing it my way trying to build, trying to, trying to live this life. I remember not too long ago, I was having my time with God and then uh, waking up and wiping the sleep from my eyes. God, I'm going to pray because I want to be more like you and getting into his presence. And um, my kids, they, they know dad's, dad's praying and they'll come knock on the door and interrupt. And, you know, I'm getting close. God, I want to be more like you. You know, I want to be a better father. Get out of here. Get out. I'm praying. I'm trying to be more like Jesus. Get out. You want me to be a good father? I'm trying to be a good father. God, help me to be a, you know, straight away yelling at the kids, going to the, uh, into the lounge after praying. And, you know, they're doing things that not supposed to be doing. And the, the, the anger rises up. The, the yelling begins. And I'm thinking, man, they're like, wow, dad, every morning, you know, dad get, gets up and he prays and he spends time with God. And what happens? He comes and yells at us. That's what happens when you spend time <laughs> And striving in my own mind instead of actually being in his presence and saying, Holy Spirit, what do you want to do? What are you doing in my life? And the Holy Spirit says, well, Tim, that self-control there, that, that, that patience, that wall is a bit uh, unstable. There we, let, let's work on this because let me tell you, when you get into that lounge, the testing will come. And will that wall stand up or is it going to come crashing to the ground? And so we, we need to be walking in step with the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need to understand what, what Christ has given us, a helper. See what the law would do. The law would just point out our flaws, will point out the faults, or, or the law will set the stand and say, there you go, off you go, go and, go and live that, which was so hard. But the awesome thing about, about Jesus, the awesome thing about the Holy Spirit is he, he died in our place, but he gave us his spirit. He gave us a helper. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Not only does he show us the areas in our lives that that are going to fall down under testing. But he says, now nah, come along. Here, here, come here. Let me show you how to strengthen this. Let us work together to strengthen these areas of your life, these, these walls that are, are a bit loose, these things that are not quite right in your heart. Let us deal with that so that when the testing comes, you're going to remain firm. You're going to remain solid. And so that's, that, that, that's our Savior. He, he wants to work uh, alongside of us in partnership with us as we build our lives. We're not building our lives on our own. We're building it upon a foundation with the helper, with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so just as we close this morning, um, I'm going to get the worship team up. That will be, that'll be awesome. Um, but I, I, I was thinking about um, how do we, you know, like we, when you build a house, you get an inspector to come along, right? <laughs> get the inspector to come along and, and check to see whether everything's Everything's kind of cool. And, you know, when, when we're living our lives and we want to reflect, how is that building going? How am I doing? Um, how, what is the evidence that the Holy Spirit is helping me, that the Holy Spirit is working in my life, that I'm actually listening to his instructions? And in Galatians chapter, uh, chapter 5, if, next slide. Um, thanks, Kunal. Kunal's the man. Kunal's doing an awesome job there this morning. Um, the fruit of the Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit produces fruit in our lives. The Holy Spirit, the, the evidence that, that the Holy Spirit is actually working in us and actually leading the way is He produces fruit that come from our lives. Fruit like love, joy, peace, patience, whew, forbearance, uh, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you're wanting to know, if, hey, hey, how am I doing? Well, is my life producing these things? These are the things that will be tested. 
in, in, our, in our hearts who, who we really are. And, um, you know, you might cringe when you look at that list like I do sometimes. Self-control. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Gentleness. <laughs> oh, I'm gentle. <laughs> patience. Hallelujah for patience. Thank you, God, for patience now. Right now, Lord. Um, these, these are the evidence that the Holy Spirit is working in our lives. But when we look at it, we might cringe. But the, but the cool thing is that's what the Holy Spirit helps us with. That's what He produces in us when we have a relationship with Him. Holy Spirit is not just some mystical thing out there. It's a person. He's a person. The person of the Holy Spirit wants to get alongside of us and help us build up these areas of our lives so that we can present our lives. We get to present everything we've done in this life. We get to present that before our Father in heaven. And He will test it to see if we're the real thing or not. I remember back in high school, you know, when those that turn up to the game, to the basketball game with all the gears, with all the gears on the outside, they had the, the latest Jordans, the socks, you know, the, the high socks, you know, the NBA style socks, the, the, the basketball shorts, the NBA shorts and, and singlet, the, the, the long sleeve down the side, the shooting sleeve, sweatband, even chuck on the do-rag, look like a real baller, come out to play basketball, get on the court and can't even make a layup. And we used to say all the gear and no idea. All the gear, no idea. I'm not describing myself in high school at all. But we don't want to get to heaven on, and on the outside have all the gear, all the stuff that look good in front of other people, impressive, and yet can't make the lab, like, like fail the test, like because we didn't have what he wanted to develop on the inside of us. Um, and so lastly, as I, as I close, we're talking about building our lives, but we're also co-workers and building the kingdom building the kingdom of God. And so when we see our brothers and sisters and, and, and the faith, we, we are actually called to build one another up, build each other up. In First Thessalonians, it says, therefore, encourage one another, build each other up in the faith. Um, and, and in Ephesians, it talks about God giving the gifts to the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, why? To equip the saints for the work of for, for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. We are to build one another up. There's times for tearing down. There's times for tearing down the strongholds of the, of the enemy, the things of, uh, of the kingdom of darkness, but we're not to tear down one another. Amen? We're not to look at one another and think, man, look at that guy. He's just given his life to the Lord. Just found that foundation. Begin to build on that foundation. But, oh, there's one or two things wrong with that fella. Oh, I don't know about the sin in that guy's life, you know. And we can tear down, but God wants us to look at them and say, maybe to, to ask the Holy Spirit, what are you saying? What are you saying here? We need to get alongside our brothers and sisters and build them up and help them. That's discipleship, getting alongside and, and teaching them how to build upon this foundation that, that has been laid for them. Amen. Let's not tear one another apart and tear down with words and with judgment but get alongside through the guidance of the Holy Spirit and say here let's build let's begin to build the kingdom and build one another up and I feel maybe God's placing on our hearts some of the the people that maybe maybe you get frustrated with you know maybe you pass judgment with um, but what's God saying maybe he's those are the exact people that he wants you to get around and start building up start helping disciple and raise up so that we can present our lives to God and acceptable lives before God that will be tested will stand the test too. Hey guys, thanks for joining us for this week's message. I uh, pray that you've been blessed by it. If you want to know more about the Monaco New Life Church, uh, please click on the links in the description below. Uh, we'll be back next week. Until then, take care. God bless.